a safeguard. seen just how many of you there were. This is actually incredibly intimidating. So, this is amazing. We are at the UK's first Dota Major. Honestly, in terms of big esports events, yeah. Look at this turnout. You guys bought tickets so fast, they had to change the setup of the arena to fit more of you in. It's Friday. I don't know what jobs any of you have, but you're here and I appreciate that. So thank you. And now we're gonna celebrate Dota and we're gonna celebrate not only that, but also the fact that we're in the UK. We don't get many of these opportunities, okay? So let's, let's, I nearly swore. Let's really show eSports world what we are capable of. These players, they've walked out to so many crowds. They really have. They've walked out to so many crowds. They've heard various cheers. Everyone says North America's really good. Let's show them what Britain's got today. Are you feeling capable? People at the back, that includes you. This is gonna be awesome. So please, 
Help me in welcoming our teams to the stage. A million dollars on the line, potential spot at TI. This is going to be huge. And please join me in welcoming our first team to the stage. Let them feel what the UK crowd is capable of. So please, without further ado, welcome Mineski. They're brave, I'll give them that. They're wearing flip-flops in the UK. For you guys, you got wet outside in the queue, but please get loud and welcome this team, bested TI champions, not once in a best of one, they did it again in a best of three. Upsets all round, please welcome Pain Gaming. Vicious Virtus Pro is waiting in the wings of the semi final. First, these will duke it out for your entertainment. We will get engrossed in the game of Dota. Every pitfall, we will be there to experience it all. And it starts here in Birmingham. Feels really weird to be saying Birmingham. Normally, it's like Los Angeles. Normally, we're saying we're here somewhere very exotic. We're in Brum. So please. I love it. I love it already. The view here is absolutely spectacular. But now we're going to head over to two familiar faces. Toby, how's the view over there? It's absolutely fantastic. I feel as an Australian, I've been deported to the upper ranks. Hello, everybody here in Birmingham. I'm here with the amazing Blitz. Blitz, we don't have much more time before game one's going to get underway for the first series. So we want to talk about a couple of the players, one from each team. Who do we want from Maneski? Who is our critical star player that we want to look at? I think we want to focus on Ice Ice Ice. I feel like he's kind of the pivotal forefront of what makes this team what it is. His diversity, how good he is, how long he's been around, that veteran leadership. I think it all kind of matters for them. Yeah, he's got such a history as well. So much time in China. He was an old dog as well from the Warcraft 3 days with every successful team having him included in it. And now with Mineski, with their performance over the last few days has been really crisp, really precise. Do you think like he's one of the critical reasons this happens? Like who else is in the team? You've still got Mushi, you've still got so many other people that work together. Absolutely, but I think that Ice 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 is kind of the key piece for this just because the way that he plays, the inventive style, the amount of heroes, this guy does it all. He almost always is gonna win his lane. You give him a one-on-one, -on -one, he's gonna thrive. You give him a two-on-two, -two, he's almost always gonna succeed. He can do it all, he's done it all. He's been on the big stage before, top four at a TI. This is no big deal for him. Yeah, such an amazing player, such a great off laner. But we also have to look at the other team, Pain Gaming. And we could have been standing up here saying, well, who do we talk about from Liquid? We've got like XYZ player. Uh, and we thought like, who do we actually discuss about Pain Gaming? And Weeha came to my mind straight away. Like this guy, he has won a major. He brings a lot to this team. And he's also a fresh member to this team. Yeah, Weeha is probably the most interesting person that I personally worked with. Like this guy is, I don't know if there's a better word for it, but he's sort of a psychopath. Because he just but doesn't this, care. There's gonna be a better like, word than psychopath. No, no matter what we were at, no matter what major, what tournaments, in the finals of ESL one Genting last year, he doesn't really care about the stakes. You can't really convince him to care. He doesn't really buy into the hype. He's just, ah, I'm here to play. This will be a good time. Let's see what happens. That's got to gel so well with a team like Pain Gaming. As Nahas was saying in the panel before, like they're just, they're running at you. They're just very, very aggressive, and they're always looking for the fight. That seems to fit him perfectly. Exactly, because if he's not afraid and he's the veteran leadership on your team, it trickles down. The rest of the team says, this guy isn't worried whatsoever. Why should we be worried? 
Yeah, Weha, absolutely fantastic player up against Ice Ice Ice. Can't wait to see how the two of them actually, obviously they won't be head to head, they'll be in slightly different lanes, but how these teams actually go. And before we actually get back to the panel blitz, I kind of want your prediction as well going into this game. How do you feel the games are going to be? Screw who's going to win. How's the tempo going to be? Mm, I think it's going to be incredibly quick. Both teams are very known for their aggressive playstyles. We saw in the Liquid game yesterday, Pain kept up with them every step of the way. That's very rare to see, especially against a team like Liquid. I personally think that Pain's actually going to do it. You, you think it? Over Mineski? Yeah, I think they're actually going to do it. I'm wondering too, like, what this crowd is thinking as well. Like, if they're actually behind, like, Pain Gaming, or if they're, if they're for Mineski. So. I know Machine was doing the highest before, but for everyone that's down there right now, I just want a temperature check right now. Who here is for Mineski? And Pain Gaming? I think we have a very clear winner from the crowd. I think it's Pain Gaming all the way, Red. Yes, thank you very much, Toby and Will. Yeah, I think you're right about the uh, popularity of the Brazilians and the Romanian in the team uh, as far as this first matchup is concerned. We're going to head towards the draft. We're back with our panel members once more. Nahaz, Purge, and Kapler are still all here ready. Um, Alan, let's talk stats. What do you got for me? Come at me. Do you want us to step off stage for a minute? or? Yeah, I was about to say, no, is this I... like a five minute, another five minute segment for Alan? I, I, you know what? I don't have any long monologues for oh. these two teams. I think it's all about how, I, I think it's going to be important for Payne to use their bands in the draft. I think it's, but the thing is, they're comfortable playing against these tanky burst damage heroes like the Dragonite, and they, they'll pick like a TA and a Lena and just burst you down. I think it's going to be interesting to see how Payne wants to approach these games. This is one of those games, it, it's really not going to come down to any number, but how fast you can play. Okay, Cap, the, the guys highlighted Weehar as you know, one of the yep. star players in this matchup. A lot of the heroes that he plays at that top end, the Embers, the TAs and everything, is that something that you think Maneski will focus on early? Um, yeah, it's going to be tough because whenever Pain match up against any sort of tier 2, tier 3 team, I expect Weehaw to be able to win that matchup. But here against Maneski, they've got one hell of a mid player. Moon slash Nana, he's been doing excellently this tournament. He usually wins his lane. So I think that mid matchup is going to be a lot of fun to watch because both of them, especially Weehaw, Weehaw really wants to be able to get those kills in lane. Right? I think that he's the kind of player that wants to be able to assert dominance over the other mid. He likes, I think, those traditional 1v1s. I think that's why Templar Assassin is such a great hero for him as well. So I think in this kind of matchup, it's going to be really fun to watch the mid lane, but I don't necessarily think that Weehan's going to be able to dominate that mid lane like he's done oh, in the past go. against other teams. I just right. wanted to throw in there, by the way, that it was actually HFN that played mid in the deciding game yesterday against Liquid. He was up 65, 67 to 45 last hits on Miracle's OD as TA at 10 minutes. These guys, they've had their laning consistency problems in the past, as Perch pointed out, but they're playing really well early game now. So the, the obvious hero missing from the ban so far, that almost everybody is banned against Mineski is Nature's Prophets. Yes. Uh, when, it, when it did slip through, they grabbed it with the exception of maybe one game recently, so it's the last hard choice here for Pain. Are you surprised that Tuskers got to the top of the tree, by the way? Most picked a DSL one Burmy? You know what? It, yeah. it was a hero that was just getting banned every game for a while, and now I, teams are prioritizing IO, Doom, and Bounty more in the ban. So yeah, I, I think it's natural. With, with that said, it was a, an unwinning hero after day one of the group stage, so in some ways yeah. the stats are looking a little scary, but I, I guess I feel like there's more power in other supports right now that, that they've seen more successful than Tusk has, but Tusk does definitely always have a place. Well, you want to talk about stats, right? The, the, the crazy one is Leshrac, who has gone from 3 and 18 at MDL to yeah. 10 and 2 in this tournament, and a lot of it is just about the hero combinations that he's been being run with. I, I, don't, know, I don't fully agree. I think it's also that they, they finally been like, all right, maybe support Lesh isn't the best thing in the world okay. to run. <laughs> it's been enough, majority core Lesh where the hero was going to work better, and that's part of the reason he's had sure. a higher he's win still, rate. He's still 4 0 as a support in this tournament, but you're right. He's been running predominantly as a core, which I very much agree with. Yeah. I should also mention oh, that no. qualifiers, by uh, the way. Uh, we're gonna I, gonna... I, no, could, no. I could just feel it. I could just I... feel Pain Gaming was going to go back to. This hero like right it. here, there's a reason that I left Naga Siren off the list. I think that Pain Gaming 
I'm not so sure about them running Naga Siren. I honestly don't think that they perform nearly as well as they do with the other heroes. The one game they had a really strong Naga performance was against Liquid, but guess what? That turned out to be a beautiful Naga Siren game, even though they first picked it, because what Liquid ended up doing was adopting a strategy where they were so reliant on the Beastmaster's one initiation and all of his damage. So they literally just played around that, made him use that roar, and then reset the fight. But against other teams, like OG, they tried Naga twice, got ran over. Yeah, and the one the support that they've been preferring to pair with it is the Jakiro, which is still in the pool here. I know that'll make you happy, Paul. Uh, but yeah, they needed an all-world performance from Tavo on the Pangolier in that game to make the Naga Jakiro work. I think it's much more passive than Payne wants to play in many, many games. One of the big things is I feel like so many of these teams are going to be able to just draft easy counters to the Naga Siren. Um, sure enough, Mineski get, I think, one of the better heroes in the Disruptor. Uh, I think Clockwork's also going to be a potential ban by Pain Gaming to keep it out of the hands of Mineski. Um, Dragonite, I think, is just a solid core right now. Oh, I mean, yeah. if you take away, if you look at this, Luna and Gyrocopter, like those two cores right now, they have such a similar style, like a little bit different pros and strength, uh, pros and cons, but I think the biggest thing is that they both are those kind of early team fighting cores that are also able to maintain relevance into late game because their farming patterns, they just are so efficient at it, right? right. So actually, the, it's their best hero. The, the biggest thing about those two heroes, I, in my opinion, is actually their ability to stabilize the safe lane because they actually contribute so much in terms of lane stability from damage and spell nuke. It's like multifaceted. They right click hard, they make their supports hit harder. Gyro doesn't, I suppose, but Gyro just has an overwhelming amount of damage from Rocket Barrage. They stabilize the lane. So at least with this kind of a dual lane, right now Pain Gaming has some potential vulnerability, their core isn't going to be as strong and able to stabilize the lane. A lot of offensive power for sure, and I think that Dragonite is another really good lane stabilizer in that regard, right? Most of the mid matchups, Dragonite is always going to be able to do pretty well, and we've even seen the option of running him into the side lane because Dragonite, with the addition of talents and, and, and different item choices as well, yeah. I think a Maelstrom is a good grab for him. Um, we've seen this hero and how he can scale better into late game than he traditionally could have. Oh, it's, it's just, it, Dragonite is Mineski's best hero the, throughout this run that they've had. Since March 1st, it's their second most pick behind only the Gyro, and they're 14 and 5 when they put Moo on, uh, Moon on that hero. I think one thing really good about it is that it allows um, Ice as Ice to do whatever he wants in his lane, basically, and, and things become mm -hmm. more uh, consistent. If you're, if you're dual lanes, uh, if you have typical dual lanes across the map, and you don't have to worry about them doing a simple rotation in the mid lane and getting an easy kill against a hero like Shadow Fiend, for example, then that means that your lanes are going to be more static, and then it's maybe a bit more predictable with wards, for example, uh, that you can outplay your opponents and go for those support kills. I was wondering who's going to blink first in the Pango matchup, and Mineski do have the first pick coming oh, outside ban. of the second banning phase, so it's Pain who actually are the ones banning the Pangolier. Yeah, so you kind of have to, with the Doom and the Pango off the board, think at least a little bit more about picking up your offlaner here. The Underlord is still on the table. That's not necessarily the style that I like to see them play. I, I think tempo Broom. control is really important. It's going to be, I assume it's going to be Brewmaster uh, for one of these teams, much okay. more likely to be Mineski. Um, it's definitely like the, the probably a second second uh, best offlane hero I'd maybe consider it. So Is I was gonna say support? leave the offlaner like forget about him right now. Save for the fourth pick because you have no cores shown by pain. So it's tougher to be able to just straight up pick your offlaner when you don't know what the safe lane matchup is or whether or not you're gonna be effective against either the two or one position. So for me, Clockwork against the Nagasar and against the Jake Hero is clearly the best four position out there. Yeah, Jab's really, throughout the DPC season, he's been the only player that has been, just been consistently excellent on Clockwork. He was playing it back in the fall when nobody else was picking it or winning with it. So what Payne have been doing uh, quite a bit is just straight up picking HFN's hero a couple of nice. times. They don't do it here, instead go for the Tavo Beastmaster. So still keeping their one and two position hidden until Mineski has to reveal a second core, which I think is a big advantage. It's gonna be Tidehunter. So I, I just really like the Beastmaster because, again, it makes up for the fact that the Naga Sire and the Jakiro tend to play a little bit slower. They, they are very, they're much weaker when Song is down. The Beastmaster can keep those lanes shove off, shoved out, roars on a shorter cooldown, gives you that pickoff potential. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a, a, a lineup from Pain that is not going to be the fastest pace in that 15 to 25 minute marker. But then again, Mineski have some very long cooldowns, so you can still yeah. kind of play around that, right? Dragonite and now the Tidehunter as well. Two very long ultimates uh, that you need to be 
just always make sure that you have up before you head into a team fight. That's exactly the concern I was going to flag from Maneski that you have you have the more cooldown reliant right lineup right now, and you don't have a very strong Roshan yet. I like I, I agree that they're 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 a little bit more cooldown reliant, but if you're looking at pain strengths, it's it's always going to be around song into ice path combos kinds of kind of stuff. Like Naga doesn't contribute nearly as much as uh, the, the Maneski supports do, and Maneski's draft is just so much easier to execute as well. We've got Clockwork hooking in, Tide's going to walk in all tanky, drop a Ravage, and that's going to give them at least a couple seconds to have a pick off before the a potential song turnaround comes. I don't know. I, I really worry. Again, it, the game might be decided before that point, but I really I really worry if we get around to the second or third Roshan, you're talking about Mineski having to control the Rosh Pit fights because they play around Ravage and you're playing against the Naga Siren. Pain. Go ahead, pick up their Slark, which is, I think, the probably the most ideal core. This hero has been looking really good lately. And on top of that, Mineski already had one tanky core. Now they pick up another. Slark loves this kind of slow damage. Not a whole lot of high burst. The only real disable that he's scared of is going to be coming out from the Disruptor. Now, we did see the combination succeed earlier against the Morphling, um, where they had this, like, uh, I think it was Clockwork, actually, and Disruptor. That combination worked out really well yesterday um, to shut down this Morph. Slikes get a little bit scared of that, but everything else he's totally happy with. Where's the Leshrac? Good question. Well, we kind of talked about it. Right? I think that Leshrac has been falling uh, a bit in viability. The mid matchup, uh, people have been liking less core Leshrac, and then the support isn't uh, as effective just because of the fact that uh, it's a lot of damage, but it's also a hero that can get run over really quickly. Yeah, it, it looks okay for Maneski right now. It's, it's very good against Slark until he gets his Black King Bar. Uh, but he also has some vulnerabilities. He could be chain stunned very easily by Beautiful Aurora draft. into follow-ups. This is a great draft by Payne. I am very worried. I really don't necessarily want to see Mineski pick Spectre here. It's a it's a hero that a lot of teams have been using against Slark lately, but I feel it's way too slow against this Payne lineup. You would have a problem. I, I think at least Mineski, the biggest strength of their lineup is that they have this like guaranteed win team fight, right? They yep. have two yes. different initiators combined with a static storm. Oh. Uh, that is massive, so Mineski can play a slower hero if they want to, based off the fact that they are going to be guaranteeing certain five-man engagements. I, the other thing I guess that you could do is put this Dragonite in the safe lane and pick like a, a like a Timbersaw for Moon. Mm. Against the Slark, which I kind of like. I'm not sold on Timbersaw against Death Prophet that much. I, I feel like she'll be able to deal with it. Mineski needs more, I mean, burst. They need burst, and Timber would cover that, but they need to be able to make sure that they kill one or two heroes as they initiate in their team fight, because Pain's ability to disengage the fight and continue getting abuse out of low cooldown spells like Silence and all these disables from like Ice Path and Nets, that's going to be a huge problem in the long run. So they're lacking damage right now. It's funny, Pain's lineup actually takes advantage of that uh, second banning phase from Mineski, exactly. where they took away both the Ember exactly. Spear and the Lina. Easily two of the best burst damage cores right now. I'm glad you made that point. I thought I think that was very important. There are heroes that are very important in the pain gaming pool, but uh, I think that it, it took away a lot of the threat that Slark would have had to feel because you don't have a lot of disables on a short cooldown. I guess you also maybe could go back for Kunkka here. Is Lesh not just obvious as well? Yeah, I, 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 I think like, Lesh is okay. I feel yeah. like Kunkka could work, but against like Song and Ice Path, that's like ways for them to disjoint possible setups or buy yourself time. You don't necessarily want to have to wait like three seconds to initiate with a with a Kunkka, for example. I just feel like I, I feel like the worry is that Lesh just, just he can't tank up fast enough in this game against this pain lineup. Yeah, he just gets jumped on. It's scary for sure. Yeah, the last time they played with a Tide Hunter and a Lesh, they lost. In the other five games they played with the Tide Hunter, they did. So maybe that's playing on their mind as well. I mean, this, this Tide is pretty rare here. They go for an OD. Oh. So they do switch it up. The I, OD. I like it. You have a saving uh, mechanism for both the Slark and the Beastmaster single target focus in their lockdown, which is one of the big bright sides that I like about the OD. It's the only real core yeah. who could do that for you. You have nothing against BKBs, though. Very little, at least. And my worry is that uh, Slark does the build that we've seen recently, goes Shadowblade into BKB. Yeah, All right. Let's get some uh, very quick predictions. Pain. Alan. Pain Gaming. Pain Gaming. Viva Brazil. Okay. Pain, but they're going to have to keep the game clean. You cannot afford too many bad fights against this OD. Okay. I, I like Nessie's draft. Just got to get a hex. Okay, two for Payne, one for Mineski. Ladies and gentlemen, our first quarterfinal is just around the corner.
Ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is the first series here at the main stage of ESL Birmingham 2018. I'm Odie Pixel, I'm here with Fogged, and we're going to be taking you through Maneski versus Pain Gaming. And Fogged, what a series to start with. Maneski, oh, yeah. DAC Major Champions, Pain Gaming, these rising underdogs that have come in with this recent roster, and they're coming in big time here at this Major. What more can we ask for? This is the opening one, and we've got Maneski, Pain. I don't think anybody could have really seen this coming out at all. Look at these two drafts we've got between us two. Very even. They both kind of have this balance coming out. They're good at building it. We've got lots of team fight coming out. So this should be this should be a pretty damn exciting game. Absolutely. And here we go as we get ourselves stuck into this first game of this best of three series. Pain Gaming versus Maneski. A lot of things to talk about as we heard from the panel. What do you think about the OD last pick? It feels like a good idea in terms of the saving potential. Yeah. Are they going to have a trouble in the lanes because of it, or do you trust in the Mushi safe lane OD? Yeah, it's curious. It's, it is the safe lane. Um, I, I think I do have faith in it. I, it looks like it could work. I think the Slark could get a bit out of control, and I really like the overall balance. Like Pain has a lot of ways to they take their objectives. They can do Roche, they can hit buildings too. Mineski, they're very cool down reliant on in the other aspect if they want to be taking fights and trying to pressure all the time. But it does seem... I mean, it could work, right? They, they, uh, they have like the big save for the Beastmaster, and then the Tidehunter. They always are going to have these uh, counter-initiations, or initiations, it could be, with the Clockwork and the Disruptor. So let's see if the, the combo comes out, right? Naga sleep into the Jakiro and whatnot. Tidehunter, he can always crack and shell, unless he gets like, Shadow Bladed or something, or a Silver Edged, and then he can counter-initiate in a lot of those times, so. We'll see if they get away with anything here, Payne. Did come across with the smoke early on to see if they could set the trap here for Mineski. Yeah, they're all about the pressure, right? That's what we've been seeing from them, just His constant going aggression. to walk the wrong way through these scary, scary forests. He's headed for King Adi's got eyes on him, and here comes Salvo, ready to go. They've popped down the Cox Jack, but that's not going to help him too much. As the chase down's there, King Adi starting to look for the body blocks to buy time for Tavo to close the gap. Oh, we'll probably be able to kill him off. Just a bit of a beating. Back oh. towards the bounty rooms, Mushi. They're going to get them all. He's going to be able to get the two of them. They're getting all four. And they've got the top two as well, Maneski. <laughs> Coming out on top, there is Payne tried to go for the aggressive plays, but losing all four bounty rooms because of it. Where are the tips? All right, there's two of them. I was expecting more tips than that. <laughs> so right away, a little bit of a battle going on up top. Just trading some, trading some harassment. So they're doing a, okay, so just dual lanes as we've been coming to see every single time. And a first wave glyph by Mineski to, I guess, balance the mid lane to the positioning for it for Moon. Look at that win rate as well on ice, 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 tide. Seventy-three percent. A lot of games played as well. Sure, flies at the top, but there's quite a considerable difference between the the number of games there on that statistic. So, ice, ice, ice. Definitely want to watch this game on his tide, and we'll see how much pressure he can get away with. And he's flying it very heavily onto King yeah. RD with a thunder strike. King RD should be fine with the Tango regen, but again, he's got to go back. He really has. That's, that's going to be pretty painful for HFN. They're going to put a lot of pressure on him. He's actually just going to stay Tango up. He knows that if he backs all the way up, then the Slark's not going to get any last hits up here. And look at this. It's a double melee lane. So Ninja Boogie's just like, this is the dream. I'm just popping my clarities. I'm going to keep spamming this Thunder Strike. Absolutely. Nothing they can do to, to cancel that matter yet. Yep. About getting very close. And if that happens, Ice 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 will be there to off the punches. They'll root him down. Looking to go forward. Ninja Boogie not messing around. TP's out. Is aware that if they do close the gap, they can certainly have a good shot at killing him. But he's playing it safe, Ninja Boogie. Yeah, they do have a lot of kill threat on the Disruptor. It's just if the Tide's up there, once he starts getting some more levels, he'll be pretty tanky, but... What's our other lanes doing? Last hits, looking good at the start right now for Pain. Kind of expected, they have this very pressure, like Beastmaster Jakiro down here, they can apply a lot of pressure onto the OD. Heavy amounts of nuke coming out from these two. Probably two of the stronger nukes in the uh, first few levels. Yeah, Mushi certainly having a slow start down there because of that. And the mid matchup in Ninja this 1v1. Boogie. Ninja Boogie got the, uh, the D ward. He's got a DD as well, so he can come back up top, offer a bit more harassment onto HFN, but yeah, HFN, top CS. Even though we saw King Adi getting pretty heavily bullied on the Naga Siren. No, it was really smart that he stayed around and just yeah. used that Tango regen just to stick around instead of going back. But now Ninja Boogie with the DD. DD. Yeah. It's pretty scary at uh, this early stage. As HFN will have to, to keep his distance, but he's got the wave coming through. Levels at the moment, ice, ice, ice. He's got the level two, but they've got two on both of their heroes on pain. They saved the D ward mid actually for uh, Moon to, when he was getting lower to use his tangle, so he's got the double effectiveness from it. So it's gonna be really nice for him that mid matchup as we see him kind of leading the way right now as that Dragon Knight. Oh, look at these last hits. I mean, Mushi's getting really pressured. Now Jabs too, getting ran out here. It's all right, looking for the body blocks. He's got the mango popped. 
And he's got the axes to throw. He's looking for the angle. He goes forward. Can they finish off Jav? Nope, they've got to back off. Mushi's on his way over. Duster, pretty low here, having to keep his distance. But again, still, neither team able to claim that first kill yet in these first three minutes. Man, Moon's doing so well mid versus Weha. Even though we have the double no build. Out top again, King RD constantly being kept low, but as you say, just doing his best, pushing the hero to his limits in terms of just being able to stay and offer at least some sort of backup for HFN so yeah. HFN can keep farming and it is paying off. It's about the presence right now, bottom yeah. jabs. Look for Tavo here, he's got battery assault. Let's see if Tavo, Tavo can play his way out. He's got to stick himself in the creep wave. He's trying to just stand his ground and offer some punches back. Yeah. Nicely mm. done. 15 and 4 CS, as we've been saying on Tavo as well. Just having that slight edge on Mushi on that bottom lane. Thanks to the backup of the clock. He's trying his best to, to get Mushi his farm. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very defensive kind of lane down yep. bottom until once they start getting some more levels on the OD, then they can start dishing out damage while pain. It's all about just spamming and pressuring. They've got mangoes, mangoes are plenty, and axes plus dual breath all the time. Good job, Ben. Oh, get pressured a bit here. Boogie's got glimpse, but I can still get it. Yeah, King RD has to stay up there. Otherwise, that's that's what's going to start happening. Even though the, the Slark is farming fine, he has to keep his presence there. I guess oh, this could be a cool play right here. Weha, he's got a haste run. He's making his way up toward top. King RD, he has got setup available with the net. And there we go. Looks towards Ninja Boogie. Ninja Boogie quick with a glimpse under Weha. Goes for the TP out. Is he going to make it away? He's not. Good attempt to escape there by Ninja Boogie, but couldn't quite get out in time. First blood for HFN. Oh, first rune, the four minute rune, haste rune. Absolute dream around that night time. Yeah, we are just that extra bit of damage they require to, to get away with that play. Yeah. Five minute runes to come in, and it looks like Pain Gaming. They're, they're, they're going to oh, get all four this time. Four? I believe so. Yep. Top lane, King RD's going to head over and get that. So look at the revenge for losing the four earlier on at the, the zero minute mark. Yeah. Like we said, the three of the lanes are going incredibly well for them. Or two of the lanes. The mid lane is, a, you know, still kind of even. I mean, we have made the rotation, so he missed a little bit, and he's a little bit lacking on experience because of Moon's denies. Now this Dragonite is level six. Weha has to be careful. And look at the uh, sort of movements coming towards mid as well. Yeah, these are the perfect movements. Whenever you see it, it's like that five minute mark, you see your mid laner either hitting six or is six already, you want to do this as your support. So you want to pressure, especially with Dragonites. And you Get that tower damage as well. We are playing, understandably, yeah. very careful here. He's not, not going to go anywhere too aggressive over towards Moon. Knows there's a potential chance of a, of a glimpse play as they'll realize that Ninja Boogie's been off the map. He's not at the top. Very likely to be around that middle lane looking for a play onto Weha. Jabs is struggling to find levels, to Ooh. be honest. He's only level two right now on this clockwork still. Did pick they up that image, but they, able to do this I think they, they might have seen the fade time from the Observer Ward. The scan got through down too, ah. so yeah. Yeah, that's confirmed. Yeah, they were aware that Ninja Boogie's still hovering around down the, towards the bottom. Tarvo and Duster also making the movement just in case anything kicked off in the mid. Top lane a bit of a go on to Ice Ice, but, Ice, but he's, he's level 4 now, so pretty beefy on his tide. He's got the points up in, in Kraken Shell as well, so yeah. still pretty tough for HFN and King RD really to make a play on him. This is a very odd. Uh, BKB oriented game that uh, like the panel was mentioning, in particular for the Slark, the Shadowblade BKB build. Maybe he'll build a, the Echo Saber, some, you know, we see that sometimes in between. I think in this game, I think he really needs to go for that BKB. Disruptor Clockwork, we've seen that work, especially for like Morphlings and whatnot, similar concept. You get trapped in that, you're in a lot of trouble. And the Slark overall in this game, I, he's got some cool things he can do with like versus the Tidehunter. He can always be getting those stats up, right? He's oh, yeah. big tanky it's, guy. That's like the dream when you're playing really with Slarks. And Dip. bottom lane, Mushi. I mean, Jabs has kind of been sacrificing himself a bit in the levels. Yep. He's level two, but he's been giving Mushi pretty much full experience. You see this OD is now level seven, and he is completely caught up. And it's oh, actually dissuaded Pain from putting on this pressure with the Beastmaster Jakira. Tabo and Duster are actually kind of moving around, looking at jungle camps and stuff. So this bottom lane now is pretty heavily won by yeah. Mineski. The, the sort of, as we saw, the, the one level advantage really between both sides, mids <laughs> and safe lanes, respectively favoring Mineski due to these yeah. due to these movements and making sure they get that extra XP. Moon with the Elder Dragon form, starting to get a bit of pressure onto that mid tier one tower. Nice. Next time. Top. 
should be able to get away with this one. He's going to be rooted up, and they'll get the kill. Ooh. HFN and King RT. I mean, this Slark is having a pretty good time, Tall. Look at those Essence shift stacks, 10. Yeah, nice this... and early on. I'm sure everyone is sort of getting farm in the game, but Slark definitely one of those heroes that the, is the more scary. If he gets that sort of a beginning to a game, if he's not pressured, and they, sure, they sort of ran the dual lane, and they, they were very heavy on the harassment onto the Naga Siren, but... HFN, thanks to sort of King RD's constant presence and sort of just drawing the attention away from, from the Slark, HFN, he's been having a great start. And we can see on the net worth, he's, yep. he's up there at the top of it. And he's gonna, like I was mentioning, the supports are extremely underleveled because Jabs yeah. has sacrificed himself. He's gonna have some free picks if he does get that quite early. So Jabs and the Disruptor both need to be careful. Jabs gets a quick D reward, tips Duster for that. Very sort of hard to to control this Slark, this game. I mean, yeah. it's, it's the static song you're, you're mainly looking at. Sure, there's some, there's a few other stuns, but with the Dark Pact uh, availability, I think definitely the biggest thing to bear in mind, as the panel said, is, is the fact that as long as Mushi's around, they will, they'll be able to sort of slow down HFN in the fights in terms of getting those quick and easy pickoffs. Yeah. They, they can force him to have to stick around that little bit longer to actually find the kill, which could then result in them being able to turn around onto Slark and, and take him out. Definitely. Mineski, now they're jungling with the Dragon Knight. They know the priority now in this game is Structure getting that level 6 yep. so that they can go for those ganks. And as we're being pointed out, the stacks from Ancients, this is actually something that Mineski does so often. That's why we see them pick the Dragon Knight. It's their most, pretty much their most played hero. They do this all the time to make sure that he is a scaling core. He can get those damage items. He can be that carry. Cabo? He's walked into these two as they will go for the attempt. King RD is around. Can he do anything to save Tavo? He's going to try to hold back the DK, but the damage is too much. Tavo will fall. Pain can't quite save the Beastmaster. It's a nice rotation now too. They can apply pressure to the tower. Mushi forcing the wave in. He's cutting himself through the tree, seeing if he can close the gap onto King RD, but it won't be the case. Fortification coming out from Pain. They are TPing over to, to sort of put a stop to this. At the same time up top, HFN making a bit of a go onto Ice 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 again, just getting a oh, lot shit. of those, a lot of those beautiful Essence Shift stacks here. And ooh, Ravage comes out, but it's not going to keep him alive there. As the Dark Pack finishes off Ice Ice Ice. Now Tabo chasing down jabs. Wee's there as well. King RD, they should be able to get this clock, and they will. Ah, Pain gaming it. Getting a fair few kill after kills. It's four for one. Still very close in the net worth. But... And it was a good response to look at it. the bottom tower. Barely got hit. They did like 270 damage to it. Bringing three heroes, or four heroes, even Weehaw coming down. Weehaw trying to be deficient with that ultimate since he used the exorcism. He probably wanted to get a little more out of it, but he's going to go to Ancients to at least get some farm with that ultimate since he couldn't apply pressure to a tower. This top there, Ice Ice Ice, he has to be incredibly careful as we've seen HFN can chase and beat him yeah. down. And this is this is 100 seconds where Ice 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 does not have the Ravage because of that sort of attempt to play in a, in a sort of a, a, a try to, to get himself out to safety. Yep. Ninja Boogie, look at this. The Disruptor is in this top with the Tome of Knowledge in his He's inventory. a level 10 Slark with Shadow Dance. He's so waiting I for the know. ulti though. He's waiting for that level 6. Can they the really outplay HFN here with this surprise Disruptor? They're going to try, but indeed the Shadow Dance is popped and uh -oh. HFN just kills one. He's got a lot of Essence Shift stacks, but he's not going to play greedy. He's got to try and get himself out of this. He's got the pounce and he's, and he's out of there. This Slark is a problem that Mineski seem unable to deal with. And Ice Ice Ice, he is not having a good lane at all up top. No, definitely not. They wanted to do some neat play where the Disruptor gets level 6 off the Tome and they go for the Static Stone, but he just wasn't able to get it in time. And now, that was a quick rotation too. Look, HFN instantly ported bottom after that and he has the Shadow Blade oh, finished massive. already. 11 minutes in. And this could even with the Dread Sakili, he's got the, the full sort of early game shebang. Yeah. And, you know, I was mentioning the uh, Echo Saber or the BKB. This could actually be a situation where he could go for an early Silver Edge. There's a Dragon Knight. Yep. There's an, a Tidehunter. Those yep. are the best, pretty, pretty much the best scenarios to go for it. Definitely, there's always, as you say, going to be the appeal with those heroes and the fact that he is he is snowballing pretty pretty damn well at the moment. Yeah. Getting a tower bottom, that's what we were talking about, is they have so many different ways to take objectives. Sure, Weeha used the exorcism and wasn't able to hit a tower, but they've got Beastmaster, they've got Jakiro. Top lane. Set up by King RD. Moon's alone while he's pushing this tower. He's he's pretty deep here as well. And Mushi's starting to walk up here, but I don't know if there's going to be much that he can do at all to help out Moon. Has Mushi got any sort of interest in being around? I don't think he does. He's watching from the side, but he is not going to get involved in this one. And, but he gets the tower. But... He gets the tower. That's. I mean, they didn't get the deny. That's. Eh, it's okay, but in the meanwhile, HFN with this 11-minute Shadow Blade, he just finds, he finds a lowly support. Quick, easy kill. And Jabs is still level 4. 
he can also get quickly picked off by this slark. This is the, as you said, we sort of talked about how they were prioritizing the core's levels. It, it feels like it's sort of had a, a bit of an inverse effect because of the Definitely. fact that their supports, as you say, this level four clock. But what does he do in a game like this? Well, there's a Shadow Blade Slark at 11 minutes in. He's got to just get his six. He's got to just sit mid and sap experience. Mushi does have a full four step and is level 11, though. So he is quite a force to be reckoned with. And now they do have Ravage as well. Okay. So that was the problem. It's like they used the Ravage to try to be defensive for ISO. He could save himself. They weren't getting levels on their support, so their rotations aren't natural pain. Thinking. Very good moves, and HFN just constantly stalking around. But again, they, Pain has the counterplay to sort of this Ravage Static Storm team fight. They have a Naga Siren. Exactly. As long as King RD is careful with his positioning, he's got the he's cool down have an though. answer to it. He's got cooldown sure, right now. Sure, at though. the moment, yeah. So they're gonna look for the glimpse fight. Let's see if they can get away with this. They've got the troll trap as well. Static Storm down as they focus towards Weeha. Ravage comes out. They've caught the Death Prophet. No escape for Wee. The rest of the team trying to escape, but Mushi, he's already got the setup onto another with the Astral buying time for them to surround him. They'll take King RD as well. That's where Mineski's lineup thrives is these ultimates they're long they can be long cooldown at times but whenever they've got those up they will be able to take the advantage for the most part against pain maybe pain when they have exorcism they can look to take those engagements and the naga ulti but in lane hfm trying to make a bit of a go here on Mushi. he's got the pounce for a little bit of time but Mushi's still able to force stuff after it wears on love the way you can just like astral you know the the dark pack's coming yep. doesn't matter How's our Dragon Knight's level? So the he's gonna be like level 12 in particular where they really want to get him that farm because he's gonna be using the ulti to hit those Ancients. It's all about if Mineski can kill this slot when it comes to it. Yeah, that's HFN still. I mean, still a clear 2k net worth ahead of anyone else in the game. Mineski's not really able to make these aggressive moves because they're at this deficit versus a Slark. So the Slark is able to control the map. And this is what you pretty much have to do when you're playing versus like these Slarks, Bounty Hunters, uh, I'll say, I mean, even I'll include a Ricky, even though that hero's not really a thing right now. The, just put down sentries and ops wards in between locations, like the rivers, in your jungle sometimes, just so you can have an idea of where the Slark is, so you're not getting your supports picked off constantly. I think they have to be hunting, though. Every time there's a Disruptor ulti, they have to be looking for kills, and they've got it up now on the side of Mineski. That's their big kill tool. Sitting behind Moon. Ready with that hook shot, Static Storm, two supports ready to go. If Pain Gaming do come looking for a fight mid, and they, they do have four heroes at the moment around this tier one tower. So both teams preparing for this clash. The, the ultimate's coming back online for, for pretty much everyone in this situation. Still a bit of time for Elder Dragon Form and Ravage. Now Elder Dragon Form is available. We are. Ben has a full Echo Saber coming out of the career. It's 15 minutes. He's absolutely massive. He really is. This is. A Slark that's had a beautiful start to the game, and he's 5-0-0. Zero, zero. He had a very good lane. And look at this. They can just siege the tower. All of Mineski just watching. Show the Tidehunters pressuring top a bit, but the rest of the heroes, they're not farming. I mean, I know the Ancients are here as well. Can they get away with taking these Ancients? Oh my god, if they actually... This is... Them, they have to contest they're, this. They're trying to fire here. Jabs, he's going to go in with a hookshot. HFN immediately popping the Shadow Dancer, getting out, out of the Static Storm. The Static Storm's going to do nothing. The Macrophage just burns through the Clockwork. That's the Clockwork down. Ice Ice Ice, he's come across with the Ravage, but the Dark Pack's there. They've taken down the Tidehunter, so then being able to control around these Ancients here, Pain Gaming, and King RD, he's out. They're backing away. They've taken what they can. They want to play it safe because Jabs is there with a the buyback. Doesn't have a hook shot. Duster, he'll stay behind, draw their attention. They do get the glimpse onto Weeha. Weeha now trapped in the cogs. He has the siphon. It's not going to be enough to heal to keep him alive, though. As he will fall, Maneski able to bite back at pain. They had to defend these Ancients. Like, they had to commit this buyback from Jabs. Ice Ice had to run. He got a nice four-man Ravage. King RD pops asleep, and they decide they needed to try to bail, but the beauty about Disruptor. Remember, teams are trying to disengage. Still, Still un 3K. unable to trap the Slark. Yeah. HFN. I and mean, now he's, 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 he's got the Echo Saber early. Yeah. And he's got the Shadow Blade. Sword. This BKB timing is going to be fantastic. He's going he's to have it all before the sort of the 20 minute mark. And oh, then how man. do you deal with a BKB Slark? You, there's nothing. It's going to be tough. Sure, the hook shot against, but there's nothing reliable that's going to allow you to trap HFN. With the BKB, he should not die when it's he's got it available to pop. Yeah, not till the later stages where we sure. get Hex. Sure, come out. But that's, that's a fair that's one a as well. Long I mean, time away. You're looking to what? Mushi to build that, but it's it's not um, sort of going to be his next item. It's well, going to be a few items down the line. Yeah, well, they do actually have the blink on the Dragonite Toe. So that could be the one thing that catches him off guard, right? If you get that instant blink stun without him in, being aware. Bottom lane, Mineski. Coming across with the smoke, they found Tava, and there's the blink coming into play. Moon straight in on top of the Beastmaster. Cogs down as well. Tavo cannot escape. The Tavo there with the smoke rotation. They've got the lane pushing in as well, and a Dragonite ulti in about 20 seconds. 
It could look if they want to try to pressure, but they seem a bit afraid. I think he wants to just use that one to farm. Make sure they don't get their Ancient stolen in particular. Nice, nice, nice. Just, he's, he's been kind of quiet. He's just farming. He's done this hood, Dominator build. He's pressuring lanes. Zero, four, and four. He's nearly got that uh, level 12, that second point in the Ravage. And it, I mean, him and Tarvo is still very much sort of on the same level in terms of net worth. Yeah. But look at this, yeah. This is exactly what I was talking about, Mineski. Yeah. All about the stacking of the Ancients. Make sure that the DK can scale. They've got, they stacked the other one as well during that that we saw from Jabs. They seem content with just farming a bit while they wait for their Ravage to come back up. Both sides just playing around those cooldowns. But HFN farming like an absolute beast. Continuing to pull ahead more and more. Now BKB about 1,200 gold away for this slot. I mean, that, this BKB reveal, they, yeah. could maybe, they could maybe even just make their way into the Roche pit. Smoke, take, try to take a fight and go for Roche. So they've got exorcism. They've got great ways to take that objective. And that Slark is going to be such a presence. He knows. Look at this. They're even there. He's like, help me farm this. Get me my BKB faster. Because they have no solution to it for a long time unless they get the instant jump. See what Maneski's next. Next player is going to be. I've got the combo up again. Static Storm, Ravage, Hookshot are all ready to go. This is not the pace that I was kind of expecting from this game, though, right? I thought it's, this was going to be an absolute bloodbath. It's 19 minutes in, only bloodbath. six to nine. It's, yeah. As you say, this is definitely sort of one of the slower tempo games that we've had here at the major so far, sort of through the uh, through the early couple of days. Both teams just trying to play their play their own game. It seems like. Do you sort of expect one of these lineups to, to be playing a little bit faster, or can they sort of both get away with the, this sort of passive farming and, and working towards the later stages? I thought Mineski was playing a little bit faster, but this is the thing, is that sometimes this is what they like to do, is they're like, we're kind of messed up a little bit in our early game, our Tyne Hunter didn't have the greatest time ever, now we have to rely on farming for the Dragon Knight. They're all about those stacks when they play this hero. Again, gonna stack up another one, it's triple. HFN, this is gonna be the BKB after this camp. There we go, 20 minutes in. So they have BKB available, level 12 Death Prophet too, and they have a Naga. I mean, this, they could definitely just go for Roche soon. Smoke, and then Smoke, maybe look for a pick off and go for it. Let's see what Mineski can find as they are coming around with this Smoke. I mean, if they find this Slark, it's, it's gonna be a bit of a nasty surprise. This, this is kinda cool, this is just a small little thing, but HFN, he's actually just been carrying sentries the whole time in his inventory, so he can he can be that D-Warder instead of telling, hey, support, there's a ward here, he can just take it out himself. I actually really like that play, it's small, but Definitely matters. And here we go into the pit, but at the same time, Rocket will fly through. Mm -hmm. They know what's up. They will have been able to check that HFN has indeed got his BKB. The question is, do they try and attempt this? They have all the team fight ultimates available. They're taking it down pretty quick. It's down to half. Ice 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 is on the sidelines with the Ravage in. He's moving forward. They're playing Careful's Pain. They've still got smoke on a couple of them. They're looking to try and get the catch on to Ice. He's got the distance, this Naga Siren is giving them a lot of vision. In fact, they'll Tamu find towards mid. Indeed, the DK's alone. Ice Bath comes out. There will be the defensive Astral, buying some time. Mushi trying to save Moon, but Moon will still fall. That's going to be one down. HFN jumps forward. He's got the pounce onto Ice Ice Ice. Stacks. They'll surround him. Static Storm comes out. HFN has been trapped for now, but he's got so many stacks, he's able to get out with the Shadow Blade. They've lost the Naga Siren. Mushi fighting back with the BKB. He's actually going to be able to get Weehar as well. So Mushi with his own BKB having the bigger impacts as it seems in this fight. Maybe they can go for more HFN trying to leave four to sentries down. They've got vision on him or pounce up to the high ground. Good flare as well. Mushi looking to chase this down. Ice pass out of this clip, not enough. HFN oh just God. survives. But that was close, and Mushi, Mushi yeah, with, with the his BKB. BKB doing a lot of work. Yeah, they had to commit so much to actually kill Moon. It put them in a weird spot, and the exorcism had ended, so their big team fight ability wasn't available anymore. The Roche is sitting at, it was sitting at about 1600 HP. It started to regen up though, that 20 HP per second. And that was a massive fight for Mineski to take. The, Definitely. The, sort of the fight we always questioned was how hard it was going to be with the BKB on Slark. In fact, they're going back in and Jabugi does try for the glimpse back. Once the Slark goes for TP out, he's not going to make it though. Too many heroes beating down upon him. That's the Disruptor gone. Campaign gaming get themselves back into the pit. They're all about controlling this area. It's it, Now it's that time. They know there's no BKB on the OD. They just know there's no Sanity, Static Storm, Ravage. The, the ults are gone. So a lot of sort of worries aren't there for pain. And, and they still have the song is the important one too. So they can always make sure, they can just use it when it's getting low just to make sure that the Clockwork can't steal it. Because yeah. we're watching Jabs. Look at Jabs, him. Look at the board. He's trying, but... They're trying to block him in. They indeed. will successfully get him. No way that they can close the gap onto Jabs. And Jabs can't close the gap onto them. 
time. HFN, he's actually found Moon. He's gonna start building up the Essence Shift. Stacks oh it pops. God. The Shadow Dance. This is a lot of stacks coming up. He's on 33. Look at these stacks go. Mushi trying to force Moon to safety and he'll save it. Mushi coming in just in time to get Moon out to the side and will keep the Dragon Knight alive. This is a game where like both teams, in a way, kind of have to keep tabs on the Slark and the OD, right? Just like, all right, how many in stack? All right, how many edge stacks? All right, don't take a fight. Wait for it to go down and then we can try to do this. Not just in terms of that, but the timings with the sort of both long ultimates on, on some of the cores on either yep. side. A lot of things to bear in mind this game. And the BKBs, which yeah. is how important it's going to be. We're, I was touching on in the beginning of the game. It's all about like breaking the combos for both sides. So Slark needs that BKB always for the Disruptor ulti, while on the other side, the OD always needs it, as well as the Dragonite versus that Naga combo that comes out. Got the mech as well. Now done on ice side side, so an extra okay. bit of way to to sort of react to the jump from Pain. Still though, a 4K lead for Pain Gaming, 23 minutes in. And HFN still looking to be pretty unstoppable on his Slark. 6-0-3, still, they still have been unable to kill him. Yeah, and he's gonna go be going for that Silver Edge yeah. next. So that's gonna make, you know, the Dragonite, he took some time to kill before, but that's gonna make it much easier. And then they can even go for the Tidehunter in a lot of those situations too. Break that Kraken shell, get a Silence, get a Disable on top, maybe just a Silver Edge into a Roar. Then they can look to actually focus that Tide and you won't have to worry about the Ravage so much. Will be a Meteor Hammer build on King RD, as we've been seeing him do the majority of his Naga games. Pretty much all of them, actually. And Weeha, as we mentioned. Very important BKB game, so Yules into straight BKB. Towards the mid, HFN starting to push out. Maneski doing a, a good job of trying to make sure that they're not going to get caught out alone. They're only sending out the, the Disruptor Ninja Boogie to really push these sort of side lanes, as he certainly would be one of the, one of the losses that not as sort of impactful as losing one of their cores, just the full four man of the, the remainder of the side are just staying side by side. Yep. Making sure they don't get found by HFN. Pain's playing this so methodically and careful. I mean, 8 to 11, 20, I think this might be the lowest kill scoring game we've had of this entire it's tournament. It's gotta be up there. <laughs> this is a very, very carefully yep. executed game from, from both sides. And as we're seeing just a little bit more from Pain because HFN did have such a fabulous start up on the top lane. Yep. That's the money for the Silver Edge as his build just continues at this incredibly impressive rate on the slot. 25 minutes in, Silver Edge, be heavy, Echo Saber. Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. And they've got, got, for the most part, the map control too, so they're constantly claiming these bounty runes. Tarbo will be able to take a bit of money away from Maneski. Gets the deny. But if you're Maneski now, is it... I guess you don't really want to fight into the Aegis no, team. You have to wait until the Aegis yeah. time's out. So, but Mineski has been one of those teams that I've seen them actually just try to t t catch people off guard where they will fight into the Aegis and just be like, yeah, they won't expect this. And they do go for those smoke plays, but I think the Hex, they really want to farm this Hex on the OD. He's on his way. It did feel like we'd said it was going to be a long time, but with the pace of this game... I mean, Mushi, he's... As, silently as farming. We've, we've sort of seen those last few engagements. He's, he's been putting in the work. He really has with some, some clutch little plays and saves. Yeah, he's got we, we expected it from him on the OD. He's been farming a lot too, 175 last hits. Yeah. I mean, Slark, the 257 on HFN. Pretty Understandable. ridiculous. Yeah, for the edge yeah. to be there on the slot. So high level as well, level 19 on the Slark. Here we go. Pain wanting to make something happen with this last minute at the Aegis. I like that uh, Ice 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 grabbed this Ogre, the Frost Ogre, to get that Ice Armor. That 8 Armor gonna work. Pretty damn well versus this lineup and they find right. Able to close the gap with the raw onto Ninja Boogie. It's a disruptor taken away from Mineski. Tavo understanding what he needs to do this game. He's not about going for the book. He's just gonna be looking for hunting with the Shadow Blade build on this Beastmaster. He's got the money as well for that full solo crest, so yeah. This solo crest is probably the one of the best items. Solo crest and halberds, these evasion items versus an OD. Oh absolutely. Always the ideal. Yeah. It's, it's going to make it very hard for, for Mushi, as you say, to do, do too much damage at all to, to HFN. And yeah. Not just that, but just being able to sort of build up the, the difference in intelligence to, to make sure that he can try and hit him hard with the sound as he's eclipsed. All right, we got 20 seconds now left for this Aegis. Exorcism was used as well. That's here, two point line. We get the deny. Moon. So stopping a bit of the gold advantage here for Pain. King already, or uh, Pain, Pain has to back out together. They have to make sure they don't get glimpsed here. You see Weeha, he's playing on the trees. He's trying not to let them get vision of him. They're trying to find a fight. Yep. Now they know that that Aegis has gone. They've timed it. Weeha, keeping Ice 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 back. 
Doesn't look like they'll be able to catch anyone. Pain again playing very, very so carefully. Smart. It's it's really looking incredibly polished by them. The full five man smoke to come out from Mineski though. They want to try and get in and close the gap. It was around this one, and we do have Ice 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 baiting around the front. See if HFN does want to try and decide to, to take this fight. He's heading to the side. He knows that they're sort of split up. He's got the intel here as he knows the two are there, but already the jump's been made. Jakiro has gone Jamming with a hook shot. They're trying for more. They've managed to close the gap onto Weeha, but there's the song. And they find the setup on the back lines. HFN, he's already been able to pick up one, and he's focusing oh. down Mushi. Mushi goes for the South Astral to buy some time to keep him alive, but HFN with the BKB is trying to move forward. Mushi forces to the side, pops the BKB, starts to retreat, and now turns back in. Weeha, he's vulnerable. The Ravage comes out from my side side. That's going to be Weeha gone. Mineski, they managed to bite back pretty hard here. Can they get more jump for from Moon? They look to chase down Tavo, but they don't have detection on any of those frontliners, so Tavo will be able to sneak himself away. But that was almost so sick by Pain too. You saw how King RD slept the units in the front and they were able to focus Mushi in the back lines there. Mineski though able to take that fight though. They're just, they're very tanky. This ice yeah. armor on everybody. You see Ice 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 has been putting it out with that creep over and over again. They're gonna try for something here, but the BKB immediately coming out from Moon. He'll turn towards King RD. This. Mushi trying to close the gap. King RD keeps the distance. There's a hook shot back online as Jabs closes the gap. Straight away though, HFN stands his ground with the Shadow Dance. Punches through the blade mail, takes down the clockwork. Campaign get anything more out of this if Bineski overstayed their welcome. They're forcing themselves away. It's 25 essence shift stacks. HFN, HFN wants this, but... They've got the sentry down. Look at that. Every time they're running and retreating, they're just like, sentry, sentry, yeah. sentry. They have to keep tabs on both this Beastmaster as well as that Slark. They've got to make sure they slow him down so he didn't get that full Shadow Dance buff. As a Basher still though picked up for HFN, so still continuing to have this game where he's not dying. Mineski, they're certainly fighting back, and as we've sort of seen, it's sure it's a 4k lead, but it's been a 4k lead for quite some time. Mineski are definitely doing a good job of, of stabilizing the game. Yeah, and like I was mentioning, they're, they're so tanky in those fights, right? Too, you see people like Mushu is getting focus fired so much, but I mean, this ice armor, this ice armor really could make a big difference here from, from this tide. And that hex. It's very, very close now for Mushi. So Blink and Hex, Hex into Blink probably. If they can take HFN out of the fights, it, it is just going to be very hard for Pain to get the damage out once the BKB is a pop by, by Mineski. Yeah, because in the most of these you know, uh, most of these engagements, it's pretty much been like after Death Prophet, after the Exorcism yeah. is already done. So it's pretty much all on the Slark since they've been using that ulti from Weeha to take the objectives rather than taking the team fights more so. from the side. But Pain, they will be fighting into the Hex that's now complete on Mushi. The route down on Ice. Again, just keeping themselves to the side of this. Ice, Ice, Ice just standing on the front lines here, trying HFN's to pay some sort in. of a fight. Indeed, HFN goes in. He's got the Silver Edge hit, removing the Kraken shell. Silence as well as the Magma Pie being laid down, but Jabs, he's ready to go forward. Gets the hook shot onto Duster. Glimmer Cape's there, but he's got the Duster counter it. They've got the vision onto Duster. Duster will fall. That's going to be one down Tavo. He's raw Mushi. HFN jumps forward. Mushi falling incredibly low. He's got the Astrals keeping him alive for a bit of time. Ice, Ice, Ice being focused by HFN. They'll turn back towards Mushi. Pain. They've taken down the OD. They'll jump forward, get the bash, take down Tide as well. Moon now sort of separated from the team. Tavo and HFN are making their way over to Moon. Pain gaming their Letting Weeha finish off the Disruptor. They've taken three. HFN's in onto Moon, gets the bash through the BKP. That'll be Moon gone as well. Wow. Triple kill for HFN. And that's four down on Mineski, three without buyback. Pain Gaming, they're ready to go down the mid lane. This Slark, just an absolute monster this game. 12 0 and 3. HFN. They and just can't deal with it. Despite their best efforts, Mineski, they're trying to be so careful with how they take the fight. But that time around, yeah. as we saw, it was the fact that they were able to kill off Mushi pretty quickly. Yeah, they quickly. got the roar. That time they got him. They got the roar right away, and King RD in that whole fight, he controlled the Dragon Knight. We saw Moon all the way in the yep. back lines, that entire fight just getting netted and just danced around by this Naga Siren. It's going to be too well. Uh, full melees. set down bottom and indeed the melee as well. In the middle lane, taken by Pain Gaming, a 12k gold lead. This game feeling incredibly hard for Mineski to come back into. There still definitely is a chance because of the fact they have that Hex against the Sark. If they can get Mushi on top of HFN, they've got a chance. But if they don't, every fight HFN is just going to run out of control as we've seen time and time again in a match where this Slark just isn't dying. Yeah, I mean, I mean overall pain, they've been playing it so well around the cooldowns of Mineski. They know that they have these long durations and then they're like, okay, we're going to start the fight and we have these BKBs. So you see Ice 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 is like, I don't really... I don't really have an option to ravage in these situations. I mean, it's very tough for him. 
What do you imagine Mushu is going to buy next? Do you feel that he himself does have to get something like a Blink or a Shadow Blade so he can make sure that he can close the gap on the slot? Because surely that, that at the moment is the most important deal. They have to get that instant Hex onto HFM. Yeah, I think, I think the Blink is always a great item on the OD. I think Weehaw actually thought that he had a Blink Dagger in a lot of situations because he's been like sitting there waiting on the Astral and timing the Crypt Swarm to make sure that he can't actually uh, try to Blink out of it. But he doesn't have a Blink. Could seem go for it though. Here we go. Smoke from Maneski. Seeing if they can catch them out. Moon's going to reveal himself with the Brief Fire Paint. Incredibly grouped up, though. It's a hard fight to take. Song of the Sirens online, of course, for King RD again. So Maneski really wants to be the ones to start the fight. In all of these situations, it's always, well, almost all these situations, pretty much pain going on them, except for that one mid, which they actually were able to win when they got the jump. And this is the thing, they, they want to jump on HFN so they can sort of control him from the start, but at yeah. the same time, they've got to be worried about King RD. You've got to make sure that King RD's not going to have to ch the chance to pop the Song of the Siren and allow the sort of reset time for them to turn things around, because then it doesn't matter if you're getting the Hex on the Slark. The time's going to be bought for, for sort of the duration to wear off and then HFN to fight back after they've woken up. Yeah, they're going to have to do some like really good initiations. They maybe even get the Static Storm on top of that Naga and try to get everything else to, uh, thrown onto the Slark. Just make sure that this Naga cannot save him. I mean, HFN, he's got a full butterfly. butterfly. Oh, that evasion. Look, we're saying evasion versus OD. How do they Absolute hit him? Dream. It's, I mean, I, I saw earlier, yeah, the, the Orchid, I believe, is is it done now for Moon? He's got, he's got, it, he just he's got the Orchid, so he can get the Blood Thorn. Yes. Not the most reliable thing versus a Shark. Sure. But... As BKB is in third place, there's definitely ways to remove it for yep. sure. But if they, it's sort of the combos, and if they can get the Hex on into the Blood Thorn, as long as he wasn't Dark Pacting beforehand, then, yes. then they'll be able to kill him. But as you say, it's still such a hard thing to execute. It's sort of the, in the thick of the chaos, the pain gaming of bringing each and every fight. Yeah, it seems it's like... But it may be the only way. Yeah, they have to do like five different things in order to make sure that they can kill this Slark. While this Slark can actually just walk in, pop BKB, and start hitting these tanky core, yeah. DK the Tidehunter, or even these supports. He's gonna kill anyone he starts focusing on. If he gets on, if he gets on poor Ninja Boogie, I'm gonna be really sad. Here we go, Roshan. It's already gone. They've got it. There's gonna be a hook shot for, but the Aegis is already picked up. Song's gonna be set up here from King RD. They're seeing if they can find anyone else on Maneski. They know, that, of course, the jabs are down the front lines, but they want to find the bigger targets. Mushi gets the chance to pop the BKB, but HFN, he's already there, looking for the bash onto Mushi. Jumps forward onto Ice Ice Ice. He's building up these essence the stacks. There's the roar. They've got the control. Mushi in trouble. Static Storm's gonna be dropped down, but it doesn't matter. HFN stands his ground. Takes down one. They do have the ravage. Can they kill HFN? Once they can, but he's got the ages. He's going to be back and ready for round two. Tarvo trying to get himself out with the invis. The sentry's down. BKB from Moon with the brief fire. Can he finish up Tarvo? No, because here comes the slug. The bashes. That's going to be Moon going down. Duster still surviving. Fred, this finally goes. There's going to be Moon falling. It's a triple kill for HFN. He's going to get more out of this by looks like he's going to get a He's falling a little low, but he's got the shadow dance. Goes back towards Ice Ice. He's going to be taken out by the Chris Swarm. That's going to be an ultra kill. Everybody dead on Maneski. GG is called. HFN Slark, absolutely unstoppable this game, 16-0-4. They never had the answer for it, Maneski. They really didn't. They got their level so late on the supports, they didn't get any... I mean, they got a couple of team fights where they could get success with that Ravage, but overall, pain. An extremely clean game. It Very really few was. mistakes. HFN played out of his mind. Yeah, turning up here in this, this first game of the series in front of the...